So let's look at this previous problem uh, from rotation again. It says a thin circular ring of mass m and radius r. So you have a thin circular ring of mass m and radius r. This is rotating about its axis with a constant angular velocity of omega. So let this be its axis. It's rotating with some velocity omega, right? Angular velocity omega. Two objects, each of mass m, are gently placed to the opposite ends of a diameter. Now, if I take a diameter, there are two objects of mass m which are placed gently on this ring. Okay. Uh, you need to find the new angular velocity. Will this angular velocity change? Let it change to some omega dash. You need to find this omega dash. What is the principle in this problem? That is the first question. What is the principle? How will you do this problem? What is the starting idea? The principle is conservation of angular momentum. I say, I say that the angular momentum of this body is conserved. Why should angular momentum be conserved? First of all, why should it be conserved? Because there was no torque which was applied on the system. Okay, you had a ring which was rotating. I generally, gently took two masses and I placed. The word gently, look, look how the word gently is so important here. If it's not gently, if I do it with some force, I might apply some torque, I don't know. But I gently just placed two masses here. That means I didn't apply any force, I didn't apply any torque. And if there is no external torque on the system, then the system, then the system, system's angular momentum has to be conserved, right? So, let I be the moment, what is the angular momentum? If, if, if first of all, the ring, uh, sorry, not this, if the ring which has a moment of inertia I is rotating with an angular velocity of omega, what is the moment of inertia? I omega, right? Now, what happens is when you place two masses, when you place two masses, this I changes to some I dash, right? That is the reason why omega should change to some omega dash so that their product is the same as to what it was before, right? So, let's, we'll use this now. So, what is the moment of inertia of a ring? It's nothing but m r square, right, about this axis. And it's rotating with an angular velocity, omega. So, m r square omega is the initial angular momentum. This initial angular momentum has to be your final angular momentum. It has to be conserved, right? So, if I have this ring now, and if I place two masses of mass m gently, right, what will be the new moment of inertia i dash? First of all, moment of inertia of the ring will be there as it is. Plus, this is a mass m which is at a distance r. So, it will have its moment of inertia m r square. And this, al this, is, also is a, uh, this also is a mass uh, m which is at a distance r. So, it will also have its own, own, own moment of inertia, right. So, m r square. So, i dash is nothing but m plus 2 m into r square, right. So, this is your i dash. Now, you need your omega dash. So, you just use, just put this here. What you will get is m r square into omega is equals to i dash which is m plus 2m into r square m plus 2m into r square into omega dash right and why is moment of uh, angular momentum conserved because there is no external torque acting on the system that's very very important you have to justify that to yourself and the word gently here is playing that role see so r square gets cancelled and simply it's nothing but m by m plus 2m into omega which is your omega dash so, m by m plus 2m into omega. Do we have that? m by m, capital M omega by m plus 2m. Yeah. So, this is the answer. 